Hi everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and on today's vlog, we'll be discussing the bombing of the Bavalking registers. One thing genealogists love are records. Without records, genealogists wouldn't be able to do their work, so they're really vital. But sometimes, records in the wrong hands can be used for really dark reasons. And today we'll be discussing how that happened in Amsterdam during the Nazi occupation in the 1940s. The Nazi occupation of the Netherlands began in 1940, and the Nazis were fairly liberal in how they occupied the Netherlands at first. But by 1941, all Dutch men and women were required to have an ID card. The Nazis used these ID cards as a way to track the population, but for the Nazis to make these ID cards extremely useful to them, they needed to have something that they could back it up with. So they used the extensive amount of records that were available in Amsterdam. One of the record sets that the Nazis used to make these ID cards were the Bevalking registers which are also known as the population registers. The Bavalking registers are basically a version of a revision list, a census that throughout the years, they keep track of how the family changes. So if somebody moves, they'll be crossed out. You might even find the place that they moved to listed. It'll list births, it'll list deaths, it'll list all sorts of different things, especially because it has a whole page dedicated to notes. These records make it really easy to trace somebody's ancestry and especially see where they've lived and who they've lived with and connect a lot of different family members. So this was especially important to the Nazis in determining who was actually Jewish based on their Mischlin test. So these records are a collection that anyone who does Dutch genealogy really loves. But when they were in the hands of the Nazis, they use them to control the population. But one very important resistance fighter noticed that. Willem Arndeus was a Dutch artist and writer who was also openly gay. He had been in an open relationship before the occupation, but quickly after the occupation, he was one of the first people to realize what the Nazis were going to do. When the Nazis first occupied the Netherlands, they didn't enact a lot of the things they had done in other countries. So they were fairly liberal with the Dutch. And a lot of the Dutch felt, well, maybe they aren't so bad. But because Willem was a homosexual, as soon as the Nazis took over, they reversed a lot of the laws which actually made same-sex couples legal in the Netherlands. So he ended up being one of the first to join the resistance against the Nazi occupation. Willem did a few things to help out the resistance. He created a lot of newspapers and publications to help spread the word of the resistance and to get more people to join. But he spent most of his work helping out in creating fake ID cards to help save people and get people through different checkpoints. By 1943, he realized how dire the problems were because as time had progressed, the Nazis got worse and worse and worse during their occupation of the Netherlands. He realized how important these bevalking registers were to the Nazis to help control the population and make sure that the resistance was not successful. So he decided to come up with a plan. So on March 27th, 1943, Willem, along with over a dozen other resistance fighters, enacted their plan and started out by dressing up as police officers. And they went to the public registry office in Amsterdam. They then drugged the guards and went in and planted their explosives. And then, boom, they were successful in their attack of destroying a large portion of the records. Very quickly after the explosion, the Nazis came in and tried to collect as many papers as they could, but luckily enough had been destroyed that they were able to save countless lives and make sure that the resistance had a much stronger foot to stand on. Unfortunately, 
Willem was betrayed just days after the bombing, and when he was arrested, although he wouldn't give up his co-conspirators, they did find a journal, and then they were able to arrest 13 others along with Willem. They were then sent off to a trial, and all but two of them were then executed on July 1st, 1943. Willem was proud of what he did and knew that he had done a lot to help the resistance. And he was also proud of himself. So when he was put to execution, his last words were, let it be known that homosexuals are not cowards. A few years after the war in 1946, a memorial plaque was put up to commemorate Willem and the others who had taken this mission. And while they were successful in destroying a large part of the records, there still are a lot of these records that exist today. And a lot of genealogists still use the Bevolking registers, which you can find online for free. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it the thumbs up. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It's completely free to do so. And be sure to click that bell so that you get notifications for all of my new videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.